We're now going to look at a really cool area of mathematics called inverse operations. This area is called inverse, which means going backwards, operations, which are things you do like division or multiplication. And the most obvious application of inverse operations, although by no means not the only application, would be, say in a party, someone says, I'm thinking of a number. And then they say, I've doubled it, I've added five, and my new number is, and they give you a number. What was I thinking of? Or you could say it to them, think of a number, now double it. Now times it by 10 and take away five. What have you got now? And you can show off to your friends and tell them what you had at the beginning was, boom. This is how you do it. The scenario would be, Amy thinks of a number. She doesn't know it, need to do it in that bigger font, but she can think of a number. Number. You ask her to double it. She then adds 5 to her number, to her new number, to her new result. She now has the number 27. So she tells you, I have no the number 27. With inverse operations, we're going to use a bit of algebra. And that might seem like we're making things more complicated. But actually, as the situation gets more complex, algebra makes things more simple. And what we're going to do with algebra is step by step, we're going to go backwards, back in time. And we're going to do the inverse or the opposite of each thing that she did to her number to go back to the start of the treasure trail and find her original number. OK, let's think of a letter for what Amy had at the beginning. That's at the heart of algebra, calling things by a symbol rather than just saying the number she had at the beginning. That's a lot of words. How about we just call it x? So x represents the number she had at the beginning. You ask her to double it. What would, what would she have now? She would have 2 times by x. And the way we write that is 2x. So she thought of a number. We called it x. And then she doubled it. So the number she has now, at that moment, is 2 times x, which is 2x. She now adds 5. You may be tempted to call it 7x, but she's only added 5. She hasn't times her whole number by 7. If she times her whole number at the beginning by 7, then she'd have 7x. All she's simply done is double it and now added 5. She might have a million and just added 5, or 1 and added 5. So we simply write it as 2x add 5. What she has now, therefore, is 2x add 5. What does this all equal? What does that all come to? Well, the result is 27. So what 2x plus 5 equals to, and the two little lines being equal, is 27. So 2x plus 5 equals to 27. We've created an equation. We'll be talking about equations a lot more, but let's just note for the moment this is an equation because of the equal sign. Equations are your best friend. Well, maybe to me anyway. <laughs> now, we said we were going to go the inverse. We we're going to do the opposite to each of the operations we did. What was the last operation we did? Remember, we're not just going to do the inverse of each operation. We're going to do it in reverse order. Well, the last thing she did was she added 5. What's the opposite of adding 5? Taking away 5. So we take away 5. But here's the vital thing. We need to take away 5 from both sides of the equation. We take away 5 to the left-hand side, and we take away 5 from the right-hand side. A quick example. If I said 3 equals 3, I hope you'd agree with me. But if I now just added 2 to one of the sides, the equation would be broken, because 5 does not equal 3. But if I added 2 to both sides, the equation is correct, because 5 would actually equal 5.
because we've added two to both sides. Same thing here, we have to do the same thing to both sides and we've taken away 5 from the left hand side and we've taken away 5 from the 27. Basically what we've done is we've done the opposite of when she added 5. What do we get? Well now we're only back to the 2x stage. We've gone back in time. Now all she's done is 2x because that plus 5 has been reversed. And what do you get? 27 minus 5 is 22. We've gone one step back. We've inversed, in a sense, the operation that she did at the end. What was the other operation that she did? She doubled it. How do we do the inverse of doubling? The inverse of doubling is halving. So we half both sides. We're going to divide by 2, which is halving. So we divide this side by 2, divide both sides by 2. If we just divided one side by 2, it wouldn't make sense, because it would still be double of x equals half of 22. But if you half 22, you're, you've no longer doubled the x. So what do we get now? Well, x now just equals 22 divided by 2 is 11. So we've finally inversed every single operation, and we're back to her original number of 11. We've done it. Let's do one more example. And I hope you're now getting a glimpse of the power of inverse operations and algebra in general. OK, quick fire. Let's use a different color. John had a certain number of cardboard boxes two years ago. Each year, the number, he has forgotten how many he's got, he had. He's forgotten how many he had two years ago. Each year though, the number of boxes has doubled. Has doubled. And this year, he also added 10 boxes. He now, <clears throat> he now has, let's see, he now has 110 boxes. How many did he start with? Right, let's bring out our favorite friend, algebra. And what letter should we choose as the number of boxes he had originally? Always pick the number of things as they were originally, because that makes the situation a lot simpler. So uh, right at the start, let's say he had J boxes. OK, yeah, that was two years ago. And each year, the number of boxes has doubled. So after one year, he's now got double of that, which we can call 2J. That's after one year. Right, one year, one year. After two years, how many is he going to have in algebra? Well, after one year, he had 2j, which means two times what he started with. After two years, he has double of what he had after one year. Double of 2j is 4j. That's not quite the full situation, because he's also added 10 boxes. So the full situation is he has 4j plus 10. And what is inverse operations all about? Well, it's all about going backwards. So the 4j plus 10 equals what he now has after two years, which is 110. Let's go backwards. Let's first get rid of that plus 10, which is the last thing that he did. The way to get rid of plus 10 is minus 10. And you always must remember to minus 10 from both sides. And notice how I wrote the minus 10 underneath the plus 10 and the 110. I keep the letters and the numbers very separate, just so it's very clear what's going on. We're only taking away 10 from the numbers, the plus 10 and the 110, not from the letters. OK, the plus 10 disappears because we have a minus 10, so it becomes 0. And we're left with 4j equals to 110 take away 10 is 100. If 4 times by j is 100, j on its own, the inverse of timesing by 4, is dividing by 4. 
and 100 divide by 4 is 25. The mystery is solved. He had 25 boxes.